Okay, what, yeah, sorry about the screen um, quality. <laughs> Let's, exactly, exactly. Okay, so welcome everyone to the Iceberg Group session here at ITF 97. And yes, sorry about the projector quality. It seems we didn't do much about that right now. And since this is an IETF meeting, the note well applies. If you are not familiar with it, please go check it out. Blue seats going on over there, please sign them. And thanks, guys, for volunteering to do chapter scribing and note taking. And when you speak, as always, please use the microphone and state your name before speaking. On agenda today, we are now doing the introduction and status update. After that, we have a short slot for trickle eyes, figuring out are we now done with it. This used to be, the agenda was slightly modified this morning because it seems that we are pretty well advanced on trickle eyes. So we don't, hopefully don't need much discussion on that. Follow trickle eyes will have a crystal presenting the conclusion on the TA discussion of ISBIS. So that transaction pacing discussion that we had after our last meeting with the transport guys. Then we have a short slot on ice and multipath opportunities by Paul Eric. And then at the end of the meeting, we're supposed to, well, gonna have a little, fairly long slot to discuss what should we do when we are now done, almost done with the current working group items. And if we have time in the end, um, there's also a slot for clarifications on ISBIS. So these are not major technical issues, more on the side of editorial things. So that's why we have the slot in the end. If we have time in the that session, Kritzer will be asking for feedback on some of those too. Okay, some of them a bit more technical than the others. Okay, any questions or comments on the agenda? Okay, I see none. So we go to trickle out of oh, work group status. So dual stack fairness draft, um, the IESG review was completed uh, just a day ago. However, now we're doing a new IETF last call because uh, in the previous IETF last call, there was unfortunately wrong information in the ID tracker on the, on the status of the intended status of the draft. So draft is supposed to be informational. There will be a new, uh, new last call started on that. But after that is done, we assume it's gonna be going to the RFC editor. ISBIS getting ready for last call and we updated the milestones uh, 
on, on our documents and ISPs, the new milestone is on December this year. And on Trickle Eyes, also getting ready for the last call and the update milestone for that is on January next year. Okay, then Trickle Eyes status. So there was a new version submitted after the Berlin IEPF, which uh, addressed most of the issues that were discussed uh, in at Berlin. After that, we got a whole bunch of good reviews from a lot of people. Thanks a lot for that. It's going to make our life in the last call, work last call much easier. And the current plan for Trickle Eyes is to address the remaining comments uh, from Berlin and also from the additional reviews, uh, submit new draft towards the end of the month, and start a work of last call. So now would be a good time if you have something in your mind that you think we still have an, an open issue, technical open issue on Trickle Eyes that we haven't solved. Now would be time to raise it. But if you think we're all, all done, then I hope we'll still be seeing last call any day now. Christer. Christer, so, so when was the latest version? Because there was a lot of comments, mostly editorial. Yes. From so, me and others regarding usage of, you know, SDPs and offer answers and all this stuff which yes. really doesn't so belong in this track. Those are not yet addressed in the version that we have in the track. Okay, so there needs to be a new version before. Yes, there will be a new version, hopefully, end of the month. Okay. That was the feedback we got from the authors. Okay, but if there are any open issues you have in mind, please raise them right, right now. Okay, if none come to your mind right now, Christopher, please. Thanks, yeah, this is gonna be quickly. Uh, one of the things we thought we had sold in, in Berlin, but uh, turned out that we haven't, uh, was this TA issue, uh, how, how we're gonna uh, calculate that one. Uh, the action point from Berlin was that uh, some people mostly, they were Cullen, I think Peter, you were involved, and Justin, maybe others. They were going to discuss with the transport people about this. And there was a pretty long email discussion about this. And I also want to thank everyone who, t who participated in, the, in that one. Uh, and there was a conclusion coming out of it. Uh, so based, there was a pull request created. And it was merged. And the uh, change has been implemented in, in, in the latest version of the, of the BIS draft. There was no objection to this. Uh, there is, uh, currently, there is an open pull request uh, because there are some changes which are needed to do in the Appendix B. Very minor. It's just a couple of places, I think, where, where it says that the lower bound is 20 milliseconds, but that should be five because that's the agreement that we came to. Uh, I'm not going to read the text, I'm just going to show you the highlights about how you now calculate the, the, the TA value. Uh, basically, uh, first of all, the, the, the default value is, is 50 milliseconds, and, but you may use another value based on whatever network characteristics. Uh, and then, uh, which is really the new stuff, is this so-called uh, uh, the, this this global thing, for example, if you have a parser with multiple, and uh, sorry, if you have a browser with multiple tabs, to to make sure that you take all those into to consideration uh, when, when you calculate the TA values, you're not going to have mo many of them with the same low value, which is going to cause problem. So the so-called global TA value. And then in addition, there's some text explaining why this new minimum value of five milliseconds which I see there now is misspelled up there. Maybe it's also in the draft. I have to check that because I copy pasted the text. But anyway, I'll check that. Uh, but anyway, there's some text explaining why for, our, for in this case, five millisecond was okay, but for transport protocols in general, it's, 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 it's not okay. So, but you can read that in the draft. Uh, I don't have it here. And uh, that was it. Okay, so for, for everyone, this has been the, the open issue since, well, pretty much on the, as long as we've been doing ICE in the ICE working group. So uh, are we now all happy with the final conclusion? Five milliseconds seems to be safe also 
uh, regarding our, our transport folks. If you know where it is, it's in, oh no, I don't have this section number there, but I think it's 11.2 or something, but you, you'll find it. In the draft. Yes. So are, are we happy now? Any final concerns or we're gonna go forward with this? Yes, I would be more than happy to go forward, but just wanna make sure we don't get any surprises. Okay, I, I think the, the, it was mainly Cullen who, who had issues with this, but as far as I understand, he's happy with it, so. Yeah, I think so. Uh, hi, I'm Paul Eric. Uh, I think I'm happy with it. Did some simple tests with the cheapest mats I could buy from Home Depot or Equivalent, and I was not able to crash them with anything. Uh, I don't know whatever older equipment would struggle, but. New one seems up to speed with this. Okay, so I think we are so far so good with TA. I see some nodding in the room. Good. Excellent. That was that was quick and easy. So, Paul Eric. So uh, these are some initial thoughts on what we could do next when trickle ice and whatnot is finished. So uh, one of the things I like to look at is moving from this static concept we have with ice today to more dynamic changing media paths. So the options we have today by uh, influencing the network is RSVP, which is pretty much that in the water. <laughs> Doesn't really work. Uh, we have ECN today to get some feedback from the network at least, but at least for UDP, it has its own problems. We're not sure whatever the network would mark UDP packets right. And DSCP seems to have its own set of issues, but at least in the confined realms of the network, it where it's supposed to work, it actually seems to work. So that's a good thing. Uh, if you look at the client options, you could rate adapt, which most clients hopefully do. And we have eyes where you can check the connectivity of all available paths, like all the physical ones and various ports and protocols. We recently had some issues by <clears throat> choosing uh, the wrong port for sending media, uh, more explicitly the trace route port 3343, which seems to be heavily rate limited in some ISPs and not others. So it took a while before we actually managed to figure out it was actually that port that caused us problems. So the end goal is to uh, find a combination of all physical and virtual network paths like IP4, IP6, and the transport co protocol, UDP, TSB, TLS, and ports that actually have connectivity, and make sure that we choose the best one, not based on priority, but on actual measurements. So what building blocks do we have? Well, we have multipath RTP, which can set up multiple paths. I'm not sure whether you can have TCP and UDP in multipath RTP. Anybody knows? Yeah, it's only for UDP. But that's fixable. <laughs> 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 yeah. And of course, we have ICE where you check all the connectivity stuff, and then you choose, you build a valid list, and then you choose one candidate pair for communication. So, like, Combining those two might be a good idea because like, then you could build a nice setup and you can just switch between paths without restarting eyes. Not looking at the sort of maybe like if you could kind of give take the valid list and have more than one nomination, I guess you could. Kind of use that with multiple RTP. Um, yeah, Jonathan, thanks. And first to answer that, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in RTP that sort of implicitly 
you know, assumes a single path. Like all the feed, there's only a single feedback. Oh, from Ice perspective, it's kind of an assumption that you're going to converge on one. Um, the other thing I would put as sort of as the a possible thing in the building blocks is that given that we're doing SCTP for deep, for all the data channel stuff, I think, and SCTP does multipath, but nobody, nobody's using it. I think that might be another thing to put into your building blocks bucket. That's true. Maybe Koi, <laughs> whatever. Well, create nice transitions. No need to switch media addresses if it detects a better path and stuff like that. So. And why? Yeah, looking at UDP and TCP, it's always interesting to see how ISPs sometimes rate limit rate limit UDP. So, like, if this is the UDP traffic through an ISP, sometimes when they have a DOS attack, they start to cut traffic, and obviously your ICE session would suffer. And maybe it gets even worse when Quick gets deployed. I don't know. That's just. An assumption. So being able for ICE to switch between UDP and TCP and stuff like that might also be a, a good idea. And why? Yeah, sure. Input is good. I mean, I'm coming back, Krista. I'm, I'm coming back to my early question, and this is something actually we 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 did. We've had some discussions when we did the uh, SCTP over DTLS draft. We discussed the same thing. Uh, I've discussed the same thing with the BFCP people with, for, for their ICE consideration. And for example, um, it's going to come up, I think, in uh, music when we talk about uh, uh, ICE, uh, the SCP, SDP, about s switching a candidate. Because my understanding is that you can have multiple connections, whether you read to always renominate them but you can have them and you use in if you're using for example consist uh, continuous this refreshness uh, you're gonna you know keep them all alive using that one but then one of the things we say for example is that or we assume you can switch from one to another because what we are gonna su suggest that added text is that if you switch from UDP to TCP or from TCP to UDP that you don't need to send an updated offer you can just do it. I mean, if you have those candidate pairs in the valid list, you can just switch between them. Today already, there is nothing new needed for that. Well, you still need to kind of keep the valid list valid and stuff like that. But it's uh, Peter Thatcher, Google. So, um, as a, at some point, you're probably going to have a slide that says. Um, what do people think? Is, is was that the last yeah, slide or? It's, uh, this one. Okay, is that is that now or should yeah. I? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it, it seems like you have. Uh, well, there are two two ideas in, inside of this. One is that the ICE agent would keep multiple candidate pairs alive, and um, I think that's a good idea. That's similar to um, what I was proposing with the renomination draft. And then the other is that you would not only keep them alive, but you would actually send media on more than one at a time. And if, if like you're suggesting, you're going to do um, any form of multi-path, multi either multi-path RTP or multi-path quick or multi-path SCTP on top of ICE, then ICE would have to have a way of um, allowing multiple network paths to send media at the same time. So. Um, uh, I guess the question would be, like Krista was saying, is is there anything we need to add to ICE to actually make that possible, or is it already just kind of baked in? And I don't know. I can't really think of anything that you, any reason you can't do this already. That's Other, my assumption, so if I'm wrong, please tell me. <laughs> because uh, you, know, you can already keep multiple paths alive. Uh, uh, yeah. You just and need I a way to renominate, which was what I proposed. But I guess you would need a multi-path renomination maybe, but I don't. Um, yeah, nominating more than one candidate pair is probably what's missing, but that's not huge. Right, you're good. Um, you, you sounded a bit, so I, I agree with Peter and with Christopher. Um, you sounded a bit like um, it would be a job of ICE to make decisions on which ones to pick or how to monitor, and, and, and that, that I wouldn't be super happy with. 
So I think that's up to the transport that runs on top of ice to figure out which of the path you want to want to know. An interesting question is what, whether there's any kind of sensible API one would need to do to come up with an order to allow um, path changes, upcoming things, and so forth to be then also conveyed. Yeah, I agree. It would be nice if I presented all the... All. It's like, so here I tried these 20 and here's the three that work now. And oh, by the way, two, two have come up and one has disappeared. And um, But that should be Boolean in the sense of saying it works or it doesn't work. It shouldn't be a, any kind of quality assumption on how, how well that would work. I think that's something you would want to have a layer above. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's a problem we have with ICE today. It's, it's the priority of the candidates, I think, because it says how to create the checklist and how to do the checks. And it also tells you what to pick, sort of. I thought the priority was only for ordering, but I mean, it gives you suggestions. But if you would, lift, give, but if yeah. you, if you would give multiple, then the app could still figure out what the priorities it would want to use. But I agree. Uh, it's up to the application to choose which path. And it's maybe ISIS's job to just present a list of, of the paths. I don't know. Uh, John Lennox, sort of responding to Peter. Um, I think, you know, in terms of do we have the mechanisms, you know, the ICE plus renomination to do this? Probably, but I think you still need negotiations that, yes, this really is what I'm doing, as opposed to I'm doing ICE plus renomination, but only expect media on a single connection at a time. Um, and then I think there's probably going to be a lot, need to be a lot of work at, you know, I think, you know, I'm not sure like multipath RTP is as fully baked as we would like. So it probably need to be a lot of work at that level, but that's not this working group's problem. So uh, I guess the question is, is that something we should care about making sure that ISPs works with, or is this something we should wait until ISPs is finished and then Kirsten, no, I was thinking, I, I don't remember now what ISB says, so maybe ISB says that you must pick one, but but this was more something that was for, for the ice SIP work. <laughs> but of course, if it's not allowed in ISB to begin with, then we don't need to worry about it in, in, in the music either. So. <laughs> um, Jonathan, yeah, my, my inclination would be to say, don't keep shoveling new features into IceBIS. Let's get IceBIS done with the existing feature set, and this will be an extension. It's a you know, and we I think our extension story is pretty solid. So I think let's not put this as you know, don't don't, don't keep adding features to an existing release. You know, Re release and then you know, release the next thing later. So if anybody has any ideas. Please come and talk to us, and maybe you can write up a draft or anything like like that, instead of just having a presentation. OK. Thank you, Paul Eric. So um, this whole discussion does, does relate to the next point we have on, on the agenda. It's like, um, what do we want to do in the future with, with the ICE Working Group? Um, is, it, is it something something along these lines, or, 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 or something something else we want to? Call it a day. So, if there are no more comments on this topic, um, okay, Paul Eric, do you wanna? Uh, you already addressed these points. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Peter. <laughs> All right. There are two paths on the road. Which one shall we take? Um, you get to choose which one goes with which picture, or uh, road in the picture. Uh, so two options we have are, A, we continue working on extensions to ICE. Um, our, char our charter currently says, without major changes. Or B, we say ICE is done. And uh, anything that we would, would want to do in the future would involve major changes. And so we would need to at least do a recharter. Those are the two roads. Discuss. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> comments. <laughs> Uh, Jonathan Lennox, I mean, I don't, you know, favor major changes just like for the sake of major changes. I mean, I, th I would want to see, you know, an individual submission proposal for, you know, this is how we think ICE should be completely rewritten. And I guess there have been some in the past, but I'm not sure how much people believe in the things they've done so far still and things like that. So, I mean, I'm open to it. If somebody says, here's my new design, let's, you know, given our experience, redo it from scratch. But I'm not going to say, Sure, I don't care what they are, they're just as long as they're major changes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, maybe I should have given a little context. Uh, uh, it wasn't Berlin, it was the one before that. Um, I proposed a few minor changes and a lot of people at the microphone said, yeah, this is nice, but what we really need are some major changes. Um, <laughs> uh, we could go check the minutes, but it was it was kind of fifty fifty at the mic. It was like people in favor of minor, people in favor of major. Um, so that's still the decision we have. Oops. Is Lennox the only one with an opinion? Because if so, we'll just let him decide. <laughs> well, I just said I don't know yet. I want to see what he proposes. <laughs> Uh, Ted Hardy, uh, I kind of agree with Jonathan. Um, putting uh, a a charter in front of the ITF community that says we're going to change this to say make ICE more flexible, robust, and more suitable for changing environments and allow major changes, you then have to have some milestones that listed what those major changes were and what they were going to do for the community. And so, in the absence of a concrete proposal that would fit into that kind of structure of giving you a new milestone to shoot for, I would say you, you keep the current charter, continue to make the incremental improvements that are, are uh, in, in mind for right now. And then uh, if somebody comes forward with a, uh, a proposal that you want to take up and the consensus is that it's a major change, you recharter at that point with that as the milestone associated with it rather than making this general uh, adjustment. Okay, so let me see if I understood correctly. The right IETF process in this situation is to propose something outside the charter in this group, but then that would be like a possible topic of recharter when we say, okay, this is something specific we can't do here, but we would right now, but we would recharter, but we do it here. So, Ted Hardy, uh, there's always more than one way to do it within the ITF process, and okay. you could take it to dispatch, and dispatch could tell you to go over here because there's already a working group, or you could do a whole bunch of other things. But that certainly works within the ITF process, as I understand it. And okay. so um, that, that is a way to do it that, that's certainly well understood. Okay, that's good feedback. Thanks. Sorry, my comments resolved basically plus one at this point. Okay, so I think we uh, have come up with option C, which is uh, propose stuff here and see what comes up as proposals. Yeah, um, Jonathan, just sort of to maybe you know phrase that a little more positively, I think previously we've been focusing on getting ice based related things done, so we've sort of been saying things that are not directly in the charter, you know, sort of don't, not getting a lot of time. I think we're now moving towards let's you know give meeting time and list time to new innovative work so we can discuss it. Right. And more specifically, if we don't get any concrete proposals, we won't be sending any agenda time and there won't be a meeting. Uh, ben Campbell. So I'll preface this with I'm saying this without really knowing what the concrete proposals are likely to be. Um, as it was just mentioned, you know, we have both the ability to, to bring things here to the working group or to take things to dispatch. What I would suggest is if these are things that are very self-contained in ICE. It makes perfect sense to do it here. But ICE is a protocol that's used by a bunch of other stuff. And if we're talking about things that have interaction, significant inter material interactions beyond just what goes on in this room, then it would make sense to go to dispatch with it. OK. So if, you're, if, if your proposal is, anyway. this is the current ICE. If, it, if you're proposing this, then come here. If you're proposing this, <laughs> then go to dispatch.
Anyone else? Okay, since we don't have anyone in the room uh, out of people who are have been proposing earlier major changes, so maybe the need has gone away, and that's that's completely okay. I mean, I think it's a it's a success to say okay, we're done, and we can close the group. That's that's not a fail. That's a success, and it's a good thing to do. So we shouldn't be inventing new work. Definitely, don't 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 get it don't get it that way. What we want to do now figure out is there someone who has a substantial drive. To find to do new stuff that's within the charter of the current group that we should be doing. If not, let's declare success and be done with it. As an option C, maybe. Oh, that would be D or D, or maybe that was no, that was no, that was B. One of the letters. <laughs> okay. Um, so okay, at, at least in this room, we don't have and no one in the chapter or Mitiko saying we should be doing something. Um, yeah, well, we still have our milestones to finish, so we're not done this year anyway. But hopefully by next meeting, maybe we can declare success. Okay, well, that gives us a good amount of time to discuss some ICE details. <laughs> <laughs> this is the session you've all been waiting for. Krista. <laughs> Yeah, um, it says here clarifications. There are there are a few technical things here which is coming up also. Uh, originally, uh, I I didn't have too much uh, time for this. And when you see some of the things I, I'm going to present here, you you're probably wondering why am I wasting everyone's time here? You know, doing showing this. Why don't I just do a, a pull request or or you know suggest a fix on the list and and you know we're done. And and my I, I, we don't really I mean no we have time but I mean my my intention wasn't really to go in and start discussing all this issue. Well, the, the 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 thing I want to get out of it is, is that, in my opinion, there are still some editorial work that we need to do in the draft. It is difficult to read, and that's not only my opinion. There's been some people who have are new to eyes who have read it. And, you know, please read it and, and see what you think. And it, it's a complex document to to, to read. The intention is also not to to when I when I wrote these things, my 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 idea was it's not to rewrite the whole you know spec to make it more readable. I think these are things fairly small things that can be do done. You know, replacing some words, removing some sentence, adding some sentence, and and those kind of things to to make the the spec more readable actually before we publish it. Uh, but like I said, there are also some 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 technical issues. Uh, some we, one which we also already discussed in in Berlin, which was raised by by Emil. Unfortunately, he's not there. I don't know if he's on the. Uh, yeah, he's not there either. So, but anyway, so uh, we'll come to that. But to to show what I mean, this is something. This is actually some what someone said in Berlin, when we discussed Emil's issue. And and I don't remember who it was, but but you know I think this this it's not you know it's maybe a little overrated, but I I think it it you know shows that it is difficult to understand some of the parts, and I think it's more I think the the, the discussions we've had is very much related to to what I call checklist interactions, for example, when you do when you do checks on 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 in one checklist. How does it interact with with other checklists? How when are you going to unfreeze candidates in 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 other checklists and, and which ones and so on? So so that's coming up here later also. Uh, this is something which was came up on the list a while ago. It pretty much died out because the guy said that you know they have <laughs> implemented wrong. But I mean I I'm not sure. But the, the issue is here that the, the, today the, the te when we do pruning, the text says that we we basically do this so-called base replacement where, where we you know put the, the, the put the base in the local uh, only applies to server reflexive candidates assuming that that because you're never gonna send anything from the server reflex from the from the local candidate so that's why we prune those but the thing which came up on the list was that or the question was that doesn't this also apply to to peer reflexive candidates and obviously when you have your initial 
uh, checklist, you're not going to have any pair reflexive candidates because they will come later once you start doing the checks. But what the spec also says is that when you do find these pair reflexive candidates, you can update the checklist and add them there. And, and send the new one the new one to the remote endpoint you know using STP or whatever and I assume that you're gonna prune that checklist also I don't know if the draft ex explicitly says that but I assume you're gonna do it because you use you know doing it because you're gonna have your server reflexive candidates and everything in there so you will prune it again so 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 the idea here was that shouldn't we also then prune this uh, pair reflexive candidates uh, and they're basically Two ways we could do this, and uh, first is that just add to the explicit text which talks about server reflexy candidates. We also, you know, add you know the pair reflexy ones. The second one, and and this is one of the things I talked about earlier. This may seem like an easy fix, but we need to make sure it doesn't have any 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 side effects. Is that we have a more generic statement saying that. Uh, you always replace the, the, the local by, by the base. I mean, in some cases, they are going to be identical to begin with, but I mean, that's fair enough. Um, but we, but if we always replace it. Are, Jonathan, yeah. isn't yeah. this just editorial? Because server reflexive and pure reflexive are the only ones where the base is not equal to the candidate. Because for host and uh, relay, they're equal. Yeah, so uh, so how, are, how are these two statements? effectively different other than editorial. Uh, How you present it editorially, I agree, is important because the document's confusing, but I don't think it's the technical decision. I, I talked with actually with Ari about this, and, and he mentioned that, or he asked me that I should look into the TCP draft and look at this, what do they call the uh, NAT, NAT, uh, NAT assisted candidates. NAT assisted candidates. Ah. And I'd, I did that, but I don't think it, it would uh, because my understanding is that even when you use NAT assisted candidates, the 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 lo local candidate is going to point to the you know whatever the NAT gives you, but the base is still going to be, you know, your local you know your 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 device, and that's from that's from where you're gonna send the. the, the okay, yeah, the I mean, okay, if the, I hadn't thought about the TCP cases, so I mean, it sounds like you know probably the describing it in terms of two. I like guess for UDP they're identical. Because this is editorial, mm -hmm. but I, th I agree that I think two probably makes sense if there's you know extensions in the future. Though you don't know. I mean, I think even for DCP, you don't signal them as not as that assisted, right? You still will have to use one of these four names. Uh, I don't remember that, but but, but yeah. okay, yeah. And and also um, a lot lot of these things in in general that are Chris is now presenting has a bit of an editorial nature. But the thing is there because the spec is relatively complicated. We don't want to do big editorial changes without checking with a wider group of people, is this the right thing to do? Because it's easy to miss some corner case that only those two people are aware, and those two people actually change who they are. <laughs> so depending on a part of the ISO. So that the whole, whole idea of, of this set is to have you guys think about this, think about your own implementation, your own way how you did it. Does this conflict with the idea you have in your head about ICE? So the, regarding this, so both are fine. Yeah, I think. I mean, my suggestion would be that we 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 move ahead with with alternative two. But you know, I I, I make a pull request. So so before we you know people don't have to try to read this in their head and 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 mm -hmm. and, and, and people can look at it before we before we submit a new version. I mean, it's a very simple change editorial-wise. It's just in, in one place in the document where we have, so it's not going to be a big change. It's, it's so, from, from that perspective, it's easy. And related to this, I didn't do a slide on that, but related to this is that I also plan to align terminology about base, because sometimes the documents say base, sometimes it says base candidate, which uh, was a little confusing, I think. So I'm, pro Probably going to use base or I, I think candidate base is better, but I'm going to align that terminology anyways. So, so Colin, sorry, switching topics here. I, I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very sympathetic to how much we tell you to do one thing and we yank it to somebody else editorial and keep moving things back. And I apologize in advance for all of that. Um, but I mean, it seems like we have much more important things to be discussing here, like congestion control that we don't really have one that works. I mean, we're going to get to that type of stuff. This is editorial. Uh, um, so con congestion control, uh, as in not in the context of ISPs, but as in a new document, as in ISPs, as in ISPs. So um, we had a 
oh yeah, you were not there in the TA discussion. We had that already. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's fine. I, I, I'll go well, for the minutes. We, we can okay. actually, yeah. actually, we can revisit that part. Um, I, 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 I don't want to create work for you. I'm not trying to. I wasn't asking okay. that. I just I like, okay, I just wanted to make sure that we were, that we had covered the really important issues before we got to the editorial issues. It yes. sounds like we have. So I will just yes, sit down. Um, Thank you. <laughs> although in the TA discussion, let's say, um, we didn't have everyone in the room yet. So maybe we want to revisit after this again. But uh, anyway, let's. Okay. Uh, I, I think this will be good. Let's go and, and as I also said, I guess before you came in here, is that my intention was really not to spend a lot of this face to face time with these issues. I mean, they will be, I will do pull requests and so on, but I just want to make people aware of it that there's some, st still some work we have to do before we, we publish it. But I think the, the, the idea is that we move forward with alternative two. We take a look at send an email on the list, and, and you know, people like Emil and those, you know, can, can, can also look at uh, Bernard, I guess it's not here, but. Yeah. Send me the go. Yeah, yeah. Well, I send it to the list, and, and yeah. Then there was this image issue. I'm not gonna rebring that up here. Is that? But basically, what he says that there are cases where, where you're gonna unfreeze uh, the whole checklist. Uh, you have a frozen checklist, and there are cases where you're gonna unfreeze the whole checklist. I think there was already in Berlin someone who gave a comment that he couldn't find anything. In, in the spec saying that. Emil said that, you know, yeah, there is definitely this text, and I guess, okay. I couldn't find it either, the text there. Uh, there is some text, and I'm gonna come back to that actually later, where you will unfreeze for each foundation one pair in, in the checklist. So maybe that was what Emil was, was thinking about. Uh, so, so, so we see about that. Uh, he was actually going. We ha he, he had his table, which he used, which was I think very useful, which he used used to you know demonstrate this problem. The idea was also to create a pull request uh, to to get this into the spec. Uh, he, he unfortunately didn't have time to do that. Uh, I also I didn't have time to talk about. Uh, I sent him an email about this issue, and I thought, uh, are you sure you're right? He didn't reply. We are going to have a phone meeting after IETF. And if we still think this is a big issue and we need to discuss it, you know, in the working group, we're gonna talk with the chairs about having a, a phone conference, but but we'll see what happens. So I'm not gonna say more about that uh, here now, but uh, one of the comments which we was given by Peter when we discussed this uh, is that there could be cases where where you would never unfreeze certain uh, candidate pairs. And of course, whatever changes we need to do, uh, that that we need to make care take care make sure that doesn't happen i don't think that will happen either based on what i read and i sent you an email about that but but anyway so uh we, we need to figure that out then there are a few aggressive uh for, when we did the removal of the aggressive nomination uh, we, we did have a pull request and, and we removed the stack but then i think bernard find out that there is still some 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 text that needs to be modified or removed uh, because of this uh, he has done a pull request uh you have the link there if you're going uh, i encourage you to go and have a look at it uh, i think he sent the link also on on, on the mailing list uh, it's not in the draft yet, but uh, unless there are any major issues, it's going to be in the next next version. Uh, this is something else which came up uh, on on the list, and I, I'm going to present it in a little different ways. As you know, we have two. I mean, we have all these states, and then we have a checklist. Can be two types. It can be active uh, when at least one of the candidate pair is in the waiting state and frozen if all the candidate pairs are frozen. But then this question is like, okay, but what if no candidate is in the waiting state, but one or more candidates are in the in-progress state? So my assumption is that, you know, we are active then also. But again, this is, uh, this is a question I got uh, from someone who weren't familiar with ICE, and I think this, this is something I think we, we should, uh, you know, fix. It's a small editorial check. check. That, that was another thing, and, and this is the, the, the thing that came up on a list. Do we need to talk about these list types to the begin with? I mean, can't we say a list where, you know, the pairs are frozen, <laughs> or a list where, the, where one or more pairs aren't frozen? I, I don't know, but those kind of things. Uh, it, it's a little when you read this, because you have all this, you have the states, you have the candidate pair states, you, you have the, 
checklist state, you have the ICE session state, then you have these types of, of checklists, and then you have these queues, the triggered check queue, and I mean, it, it, it's kind of messy. But, but that's really not, uh, this was more just uh, about this definition of, of the, uh, assuming we're going we're gonna to keep the active uh, checklist that it should also cover uh, when when a candidate pair yeah, is in, uh, in progress. Just an example. I guess the thing is, wh where are these states used? I mean, wh where in the document does it just say, if it's in this state, do this, if it's in that state, do that? That's the thing to look at to see what happens, you know, figure out what should happen if, you know, there's in progress, but nothing is waiting, or everything's completed or failed, or so on and so forth. You know, what is, you know, yeah, I mean, and, and, like I said, and if there isn't any where this is used, then you should remove it. You know, it's the, <laughs> You know, there's you know the dead code elimination and all that, but and if it is used, that should hopefully tell us. I think it is in use because you have, for example, when you have some race conditions, then you take this in progress in consideration. I, I don't remember. The, okay, so, yeah. so my suggestion is not really to remove any in, any states here. I mean, that, yeah, that, no, that's no, I'm just saying that's. I I don't know what the answer. I mean, I think probably you know if there's in progress but not waiting, but you know if it's. You know, if, if the, where this is used is, do you pull one off to start it, then obviously if you don't have anything waiting, it's not relevant. Um, if it's something else, then that's why, that's why I'd want to, I need to review this back or hopefully have you review this back and tell me um, to say where this is used to figure out what the right answer is. And, and a similar question I got is, why do we need this valid list? Why don't we just define a new candidate pair state, which is valid? And then, you know, but I did, uh, again, uh, maybe that's a little more than what we want to do at this stage. So, so that's why I didn't add it to, to the slides. Uh, then we have is sending from local candidate versus sending from base. Uh, there are some few places in the, in the document which talks about, you know, you send the can, you send the, you send the stun uh, request or the connectivity check from, from, from the local candidate. But as far as specification is concerned, you, you don't do it. You always send it from the base. And again, in many cases, they're going to be the same, right? So, but, but that, you know, that's not the point. The point is that if you look at the definitions of, of, of what local candidate and what base means, you're always going to send the, the connectivity checks from the base. So the suggestion basically would be here is that, uh, you know, we do that modification also. It's not in too many places in the document, so I guess this, this would not be a big rewrite. So, but, but check that, or, or I mean, because the only thing the local candidate is going to be used for is when the other one sends stuff to you. So, right. So, but you always your checks are always sent from from the base. Um, okay, and the, the, then there's another thing: uh, the base draft. Uh, this is when you start uh, unfreezing uh, uh, one of the checklists. It says, "Uncheck the first media stream." Uh, but there is no guidance, okay, what does first media stream mean? Uh, does it need to have some specific characteristics? Is it the most, uh, you know, you know, wh what is it? I mean, in, in, uh, and now in someone can say, yeah, it's the first M line in the SDP, but keep in mind, this is not the SDP. So for example, in, in, in the music spec, we may say that, you know, when you use this with CP, then first, first uh, media stream means the first M line in the SDP. But I think we should say something here. If we don't say anything else, we should at least say that, you know, the meaning of first media stream or the selection of first media stream is outside the scope of this document and need to be defined by each usage, usage of eyes. But the way it's written now, it's completely unclear. Uh, I agree that it's, um, yeah, the ordering, I mean, not just which one is first, but the total ordering, because there's a lot of things where it's not just the first one, but the next one is also used in a number of places. And I think that has to be defined by the using spec to sort of what is the order, the total order of the media streams. And I was thinking, for example, when I talk about these characteristics, I mean, I'm, I guess in most cases, if you have multiple streams, in a normal case, you're going to have the equal amount of, of candidates for each of them. Yeah. But in theory, you could have, I mean, let's say that you have some kind of media stream that you, for whatever reason, you always want to send it through a, 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 a turn server. Yeah. So you're not going to collect other 
candidates for it. Yeah, well, this is the, then, this but is then the, for it, just let me finish this. Uh, I have it in my head. So, that, yeah. so, so then, but then for your other other media streams, you can have all these hosts, local or whatever. So I thought that first media stream, the characteristic should probably be a media stream where you have a lot big, large set of candidates you don't think uh, so Jonathan Lennox I mean I think the the problem is that the case you're describing is a subset of some of the more complicated cases because uh -huh. there's also the case like the, the pure distributed media case where you know the, the foundations on stream one and the foundations on stream two are entirely disjoint yeah because you know they're actually two different boxes that you're controlling um, which we have to handle um, and I think this gets into the email table issue where it's like it's not it's mm -hmm. the First stream that has this foundation that caught that you know, and then things like that, and it's possibly the whole description of the algorithm needs to be. I think so. There's like I think I pointed this out to JDR late in the in the um, development of 5245, and I think there's some word some text in there which is already which is mm -hmm. kind of flaky about that. So we might want to even re, you know make sure that we actually have this algorithm well specified. So it's like you know. The thing you want, you know, you start, check start, you know, the first media stream that has this foundation, or, I, I'm not describing, I'm not going to wordsmith at the mic, but basically that's what starts out as unfrozen. You know, the first, the first check with the, the, of this foundation or something, I mean, you, I hopefully you understand what I mean. This is the meal table, but this is the, uh, this is the area where we need to make sure that this is right for these like distributed media cases or, you know, like you said, one media system going through turn or, you know, one one media stream, the turn server failed, so you don't have a turn candidate for that stream or something like that. There's a bunch of cases like this, and it also interacts with a lot of the trickle cases. Yeah. So, so maybe we, I mean, we maybe in four five four base, we don't need to go into much in detail of that. But I think at least we should say that you know there must be a mechanism for usage to define what is the first 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 media yeah, stream. Yeah. We, uh, I, I don't, well, as far as 5245 bis is concerned, only the first one matters. Because then when you, when you, when you find, when, when, a six, so when a check succeeds, you're going to go through all your other checklists and see if you have matching foundation in those. Mm -hmm. There is no word, there is no text about saying, then you go to the second checklist okay. and then uh, you go John, to the third. Yeah, but, but there's the issue that I think I was just mentioning, that is again the distributed media case where you know if a certain foundation only appears in the second one, it's like in the second and the third, then you go then you start that check on the second. I, so you I, need to know which one is second. You know you need to know have a total order so that you can find which is the first one for each foundation. I hear what you're saying, but that's not how 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 how, how it's defined today. Everything is starts from the first media yeah. stream, and then you I have the rest. That, I think that might that, be a bug in 5245. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I mean, so and, and and that's not how I implemented it. So so, so we I so, wanted to work the way I implemented. Okay, so we, you know, but you know, have okay. a look have a look at that. But okay. uh, Jonathan, um, do we have uh, you as a volunteer to make a pull request on clarifying text? Oh, maybe. Uh, I don't think the, this is a little more than a pull request for clarifying. Yeah, I think this, they, this they, would be something. Because this this is more uh, this is more yeah maybe I so okay. I think this is related to the email table issue and things so maybe I need to you know discuss it on the on the list so okay see. so okay. let's figure out the call on that um, Jonathan uh, Emil Christer yeah. okay uh, sometime soon after this this meeting excellent so can we have uh, uh, notes note takers take that note of yeah, and then uh, this is just a small check, but again, a question I got is the order of connectivity checks in in uh, in the definition for waiting. The definition waiting for says is that check has not been performed for this pair, and then comes and it can be formed as soon as it is the highest priority waiting pair on the checklist. But that's not really true, because you're always gonna uh, send uh, trigger checks first. No matter what, what the priority is, at least I couldn't find any text saying that when you when 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 you have a trigger, when you trigger checks suddenly you know, you raise the priority. I mean the priority has been calculated before a pair becomes is added to the to the triggered queue. So 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 I think that are, are triggered checks put on the checklist at all? I thought they were sent immediately. E Trigger checks called trigger check queue. 
If yeah, I which remember. is not the same thing as the checklist. They are in the che- checklist. Are they in the? Yeah. Oh, high priority waiting. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. no, that's, did they go to waiting state? I don't think. Hold on. Trigger checks don't go to waiting state, do they? They just send immediately. Yeah, they're just sent immediately. So they're no, they are not sent immediately. They are there, and that's under text. They are going to this uh, uh, highest, this this um, triggered queue, and they are sent at the next possible. Yeah. Wow. Oh, but his point is that the, the, that if the triggered queue is non-empty, then even though something is the highest priority waiting card, the checklist it still can't be performed immediately. I think is the argument. So they're just the wording there is not. Quite right. That's what he's claiming, which I guess I kind of see. Yeah, and and, and uh, I mean, my point is that I don't really think in the definition for waiting we don't really need to say when 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 something is going to be sent. I mean, I, I don't think so. I think basically, I, I think we could 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 uh, remove this and just say that uh, that a check has not been performed for this, but will be. It's ready to be performed when applied. It's some some word, but my point is we don't really need to talk about this because this belongs elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, to make sure this is now in a state where it's going to be sent or or checked. Yeah. And um, related to that is that in the same sections, um, the definition for frozen says that a check a check for this pair hasn't been performed, and it can can't be performed and then you have involved until some other check succeeds but pairs can actually be unfrozen also due to other reasons it's not all always mm. when something succeeds for example if the if the if the timer expires and there are no waiting no pairs in the waiting state then you are going to start unfreezing the the the, the frozen ones but that's done because of that not because of of another check uh, uh, being done, uh, but again, I'm not sure how much whether we need to really specify here. Uh, you know, when, when, and if they're going to be 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 unfrozen. The important thing here is that saying that uh, they are frozen and 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 not they will not be checked until they are unfrozen due to the procedures in in this space, something like that. Um, Unfreezing of checklist, and this is a little. This is maybe a little related. No, I, I don't think actually think this is the image issue. This is another issue. For example, you have text saying that once all pairs in a checklist are either in failed or succeeded state, which means you have tested them all, that the other checklists are unfrozen. And that's a little strange for me because say that you you have one checklist where everything where it's done, but then you have another checklist which you are still working on. So why should you then just go and unfreeze everything else? I mean, you should work with that one and 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 test those things, and and you go on and go on. I think you shouldn't really. When when the only thing you have left is unfrozen unfro- checklists, when you don't have anything else that's going to trigger any text, then you start unfreezing them if you still have them. And I guess this could happen if in in this you know that we talked about earlier. But I don't think just because one checklist is done, you should go and unfreeze everything else. Uh, I don't think that that's uh, and it, yeah. So 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 my suggestion would uh, I don't have this. I need to think a little how to word it. But the idea here is basically that you don't you don't automatically unfreeze other checklists until you know you don't have any anything else to do. Um, uh, okay. So that was it. So, again, there is some some editorial-ish work still to do, to be done. Like I said, there were there were uh, I, I had many slides, but the change is required for each for each issue. It's not that big, I think, but I think it will make the 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 draft much more readable. So that's why I really want to do it before before we you know before we publish and and you know if people still think it's not readable after that then you know at least we tried. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Chris. So actually, that was, that was the last thing we had on on, on the agenda. But I 
suggest we visit the TA discussion now when we have Colin in the room. Um, let me pull up those slides. Thanks. Really sorry I wasn't here earlier. I just couldn't be here. No, uh, yeah. Yeah, so what I was saying, uh, I'll just so what I was saying is that uh, there was this discussion with, with the transport people, you were involved in that. And there was a pull request which was merged and is now in the latest version of the beast draft. And there is currently a, a pull request to align Appendix B, a very small change. Then I said, hey, this is basically what the change is. And I see there is actually an error. It says 50 milliseconds there. It should be five milliseconds. And that actually bug exists in, in, the, in the draft also. I, I checked that. So, so it's, it was not my. But basically what it says here is that the TA value is five milliseconds, but you can use other values. Then it talks about this global TA value to take that into consideration. And then there is some text talking about why five milliseconds is good for ICE, but it's not good for transport protocol in general. So, so I, I was worried more about the congestion control issue. So we had this thread with the transport people talking about not more than ten outstanding packets, uh, unre, you know, unreplied packets. And fuck, there's the person to speak to it right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you go read the whole list, uh, or two, or three, or however many there were, um, you'll see that the pattern was basically that they had a set of three rules, uh, the transport guys that they wanted. And in the case of ICE, those basically reduced down to one rule. And the one rule was that there had to be a global TA of five milliseconds. I, I, that's interesting. I, I mean, I, the math I saw was 500 milliseconds RTT unless you knew otherwise, and not more than 10 outstanding packets, which would imply a TA of 100 milliseconds, not five milliseconds. Yeah, so later down in the discussion, um, <laughs> they, they said, well, actually, instead of 10, it can be 100. And at that point, <laughs> At that point, five milliseconds was the bottleneck, not the Why number of outstanding. Go read the the whole thing. I mean, it's a long email discussion, but you can read the, all of it. The problem is, is <laughs> due to the way the people use the email addresses and how ITF works, I don't get many of the emails from the people that were on it. So okay. that's, that's you not can, my fault. You I can, can't read much of it. You can also go read the see what it says, and there's okay. some explanation. The whole thing is explained okay. in the pull so request, what, the, what, the reasoning. What, what max bandwidth do we end up on that then? The same one you would get with the rules that they that they proposed. What is it, do you know? It was, I have to do the math. It was in the, it was in the ballpark of what we were saying. Okay. Okay. So I, I don't want to say a number, it's, you know, it's the kind of number that we had, were proposing earlier to be the, the max uh, rate. Okay, and, and we're, we're comfortable that like the 80s, like ISG is going to be on board with this 100 outstanding unrequested packets. Well, all the experts in the area of congestion control were, so. Okay, yeah, nothing will be a best. Okay. So, I mean, okay, so I'm shocked and would not be surprised to see this back here again on the, it didn't turn out to be quite that, but that's wonderful if it's okay. all resolved. <laughs> yeah, I guess this is the best we got so far. Right, uh, Colin Perkins, so, so I, I, I don't recall the outcome of the discussion, but if it really is 100, I would. Uh, suggest that someone checks with uh, one of the transport guys to double check that. That was <laughs> from the transport guys. Yeah. So, so as, as, I, as I say, uh, I, I specifically. So, 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 so uh, as I say, I, I, I don't recall the outcome of that discussion, but if it really is 100 packets outstanding, I think you should check with someone from the transport to make sure that there hasn't been something lost in translation. Again, you can go check the email thread, but uh, I mean, I was I was very clear saying, okay, this is this is what you want, and then write the wrote, wrote the pull request with all the explanation. They proofread the pull request. They <laughs> specified here the ITF RFCs that you that we need to reference and everything. So, so, so uh, David yeah, Black and John, right? Colin Perkins. So I'm I'm not disagreeing with any of that. I believe you did all of those things, but as a transport person myself, and not someone who's commented on this. I suspect if you go to the transport and say it's 100 packets outstanding without any feedback, you'll get a, whoa, really? So as I say, I would recommend, and I, if you don't, that's entirely up to you, but I would recommend you double check with the transport ADs. Oh, well, I don't know who the transport ADs are, but. Yes, I, yeah, Alyssa Cooper, I don't. So, yeah, I mean, there, 
you can send it to TSVR, but I really feel that it's unfair to you to be badgered about what you did because you did exactly the right thing. And there's a long thread about this on the ICE mailing list that includes a lot of input from Jenna and David Black, which were the instigators of this originally. So I, I think you did a good job with this. So just one more thing. The backup plan is basically to, you know, if, if somebody says, you know, we, we can't go forward with just rule three out of the three because it reduced down to the third, we could just back up and expand it back to the three rules. And the three rules are still basically in there, but they're as part of an explanation. And if it can't, it, the worst case scenario is that we take the reduced rule and expand it back to the three rules and make it not normative instead of ex explanatory. But um, it doesn't seem like that's necessary, so. I just want to say I didn't want to come across wrong. I, like, thank you for driving that into the ground. I'm not, <laughs> you know, it's not easy. So thanks. This is Ben Campbell. One comment on the history of how we got here. Uh, yeah, I realize that uh, there's always a concern that the TSVADs may surprise us, but we got here by going to the TSVADs, and they sent us to these people to talk about it. So if we come back to the TSVADs, we're just going through the circle. <laughs> Okay, so seems we have been turning enough stones on this topic for, for now at least, so we are confident going forward and no one is, is anymore disagreeing on that. I think that's a, that's a good thing. I mean, you can always, you still have time to change your mind, I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm just talking about experience from Bundle. So. <laughs> Okay, excellent. Thank you, Christian. And I think un unless anyone has any other issues you want to raise up, I think we have a chance to close the meeting before end of schedule, first time in the history of Iceborgen Group. I think that's also great. Okay, I don't see anyone coming to the mic, so in that case, thank you guys. And have everyone signed the blue seats? If not, please sign them and see you around. <laughs> Like I said, with the worst case scenario, having to back out. Yeah. 